If you are considering going freelance, then this video will give you a little bit of space to think it through. Let's go. Hello friends, my name is Matt Brunton. I'm here in the north of England. And for those that don't know, I work freelance as a senior graphic designer and also work with my own clients on brand strategy and creative direction. And this video is not about me though, it's about you. And you might be considering right now going freelance, working independently as a contractor. And I want to give you not the answers, but some of the questions to think through whether this is for you. So we're going to do this in three sections, the psychological, the practical and the routine. So first of all, the psychological. So ask yourself, can I make peace with uncertainty? As an adult, you have to learn to deal with the uncertainty of life. We never know for sure what's going to happen. I mean, the last two years have taught us that our expected norms about society and the freedoms that we have were turned on their heads. So even in something that seems certain, it's never there. But going freelance can layer on too much uncertainty. Perhaps if you're somebody who struggles with that, you may be prone to anxiety or you're still working through some of those issues please get help with that. You know, there's been uh, books I've read and conversations that I've had that have really helped me move forward in my life and become more at peace. But if you're a little bit anxious, a little bit stressed out at the moment, you've maybe got uncertainty in other areas of your life. Perhaps your partner's work is uncertain. Perhaps you're moving to another uh, country or something like that. You probably don't want to layer that on at the same time. And you also need to reach some degree of peace with the fact that some months are going to be good, some months are going to be not as busy. There's going to be unexpected challenges. You might not know what's coming down the pipe. So you've got to learn to make peace with that to some degree to be a good freelancer and maintain uh, your confidence and your positivity through the different seasons. The second set of questions are, are the practical. So first of all, do I have a strong network? You probably want some idea of who your initial clients are going to be. You probably want some idea of what kind of contracts you want to work on and who the people are that you can contact. Often people uh, start freelancing from the com or for the company that they were working for as an employee before. That's a great way to start. That might have uh, led to some connections. If you are uh, legally and ethically allowed to uh, leverage those connections that you built up, then that's something that you should do. But you need to have some sort of network to begin with. If you've no idea where your clients are going to come from, you may be perhaps not ready to start. And you also need to be prepared to, to grow that network and do the work that is involved in that. You also want to ask yourself practically, do I have adequate savings? You need some sort of runway. So that means a certain amount of months in the bank of your expenses. So you know that if you're not earning or your earnings are lower than you expected for a while, that you're able to ride that out. You need some sort of emergency fund. I recommend for everybody to have at least three months of their expenses in the bank in savings, just keep it in cash so you are ready for unexpected things that come up. And if you're freelance, you maybe want to have six months or even tending towards uh, 12 months with money in your business, money saved personally. So you, you are not taking on the wrong kind of jobs or you're so stressed out it becomes counterproductive. Money in the bank really unlocks the whole freelancing game, you become more relaxed, you take on the right jobs that will advance your career, not the ones that you just really need to pay the bills. So make sure you have adequate savings. And the final section is the, the routine questions. How is this going to affect your day to day, your lifestyle? So first of all, do I enjoy marketing and administration? Often we think, oh, I want to go freelance because I just want to do the thing I love all the time. Maybe you're an illustrator, maybe you're a photographer. You could be in trade, you could be in a consultant. But when you go freelance, often you spend less time doing the skill, the thing that is your job, than you do when you're in a job. If you just want to design, then get a job as a designer. But if you go freelance, you're going to be constantly marketing yourself, spending that time networking, you're going to be doing administration, you're going to be handling finances, legal issues, insurance, all these kind of things come onto your plate now. So you need to have some level of enjoyment uh, 
of doing those things so that you're not frustrated all the time. If you just want to do the skill and execute the skill, if you're an electrician, then get a job within a big electrical firm rather than uh, going out on your own. And think as well about, will I become more isolated? So perhaps you're working in a team environment as an employee, and if you go freelance, that might change. You might be by yourself. So think about how that's going to affect you. It might, it might be the other way around. You, you might be more networked in with people as a freelancer because you have uh, different options. But think about whether you will become more isolated and how that might uh, affect you socially. And finally, within the routine, ask yourself, will I have more control of my schedule? So for a lot of freelancers, this is why they go freelance, why they do it, because they like to have control, they like to have flexibility. For myself, I've got three sons, so to be able to be involved in their lives and have uh, flexible weeks and times is a great advantage, but it's not always the case. Sometimes you're on certain contracts and you're in less control because you don't have the ability to go home at closing time. You have to make sure the job is done or you have to do your admin after you've actually done your day's work. So it can actually take more time and that leads to less control overall and you can't put boundaries on your work, but it also could unlock some sort of flexibility. So you need to be uh, honest with yourself, maybe do some research, ask some people. This is something I definitely recommend if you're considering going freelance. Ask people who do it, particularly in your industry, particularly in your role, if you can, and ask them how it works for them. Ask them about the pros and cons. I've worked in-house, I've worked for agencies, I've worked with my own businesses, and I've worked freelance as well. So I've kind of done uh, the whole gamut. And it works for me right now. But these questions are something you want to keep asking and keep making sure that you are designing the kind of life that you want. But freelancing can open incredible opportunities. So let me know in the comments if this has been helpful for you and any other questions you maybe ask yourself or you'd recommend for other people to ask. We're just getting started on this channel. It's still fairly new, so I would love it if you subscribe. That would really help us get the momentum going. Talk to you soon.